Now, what introduction to probability and statistics? Welcome to the class. To be able to successfully complete this course, you need some college level math. Prior knowledge of probability and statistics is not assumed. Knowledge of calculus will be beneficial, but it's not going to be required. Here are the objectives of the course. Provide working knowledge of the fundamental concepts of probability and statistics. Provide background for data modeling, analysis, and visualization in bioinformatics course, if that's what you're planning on taking. Focus on practical applications of statistics in data analysis, correlation, and parameter estimation. Be able to read statistical charts and tables appearing in technical literature. This course will work as a refresher for those of you who may have taken such a course in college but never used the concepts. The grading for this course is based only on homework assignments. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but there is no final. My course follows the book very closely. I suggest getting a copy of the book before starting this course. My recommendation is to get the 11th edition, even though several later editions are available from the publisher. Here is a list of some of the major topics I will be discussing in this course. Uh, we will start with uh, how to describe data, how to present data in a meaningful way, pie charts, bar charts, line charts, etc. We will then learn how to summarize data with numerical measures and what are the appropriate measures. Next, we will learn about the concept of probability. We will explore discrete distributions like binomial and Poisson and their applications. We will then go on to the normal distribution, sampling distribution, and linear regression. Again, the focus will be on practical applications of these concepts. Look at these three statements. Let us start with the first one. Doctors say that the average child walks by the age of 12 months. Gee, my child doesn't walk yet. What's wrong with him? So what's wrong with your child? Nothing. That's just on an average. Approximately half the children will walk before 12 months and the other half after. So if your child is in the other half, no problem. No big problem. The second statement. Arizona ranks 49th in teacher salaries. Does this mean that Arizona ranks 49th in the quality of education? Probably not. Teacher salaries are affected by other factors, such as the cost of living in that area, etc. Now, the third statement. More car accidents occur in clear weather than in foggy weather. Does that make sense? Yes, because there are more vehicles on the road in clear weather than in foggy weather. So what's common between these three statements? They are all accurate, but if you are not careful in interpreting them, they could be quite misleading. So, one of the things we will learn in this course is how to be careful in interpreting such statements and hopefully not making such statements ourselves. I am sure you want to know this. The odds of dying. What are the odds of dying from a lightning strike? Here is some information from the statistical abstracts of the United States. It says 1 in 4 million. Where did that number come from? Well, there were 63 deaths due to lightning strike in 1998. The population of the US in 1998 was approximately 270 million. So, if you divide 270 million by 63, it gives you that number, 4,289,651. If you further divide that number by the life expectancy, you get the lifetime odds, 1 in 55,928. The website listed here contains lots of other statistical information that you might find useful. Let us talk about polling. The question, do you think it should be legal or illegal to use a handheld cellular phone while driving a car? 69% of the respondents answered illegal. Now, this was based on interviews with only 1,007 people 
and the results are applicable to the whole US of 250 million people. So, do you believe that by polling approximately 1000 people, you can gauge the opinion of 250 million people? Be careful in what you answer because you will be making such statement before the course ends. I suggest you read this very interesting story about the first Gallup poll. Next, let's judge how good our intuition is regarding probability. So, you are on a game show. You are shown three closed doors. Behind two of the doors, there is a goat. Behind the third door, there is a car. And of course, you want to win the car. You are now asked to pick a door. Let us say you picked the third door. What is the probability of you winning a car? One third, agreed. So, if you play 100 games, you will win approximately 33 cars. The host now opens one other door, say the first door, and shows you a goat behind it. So now, a car is behind one of the two closed doors. The host then asks you if you want to switch to the middle door, the door that you had not picked. So, what would you do now? There are two choices. A. Nothing. The probabilities didn't change, so I don't have to do anything. B. Switch to the middle door. So, I don't know what your answer was, but B is the correct answer. Switch to the other door. Switch to the other closed door. Remember, earlier you agreed that if you pick a door at random, you will win approximately one third of the time. So, if you did not switch, you would win approximately 33 cars in 100 games. Now, what happens to the 67 cars that you did not win? Well, they were behind the other door. So, if you switched every time, you will win 67 times and lose 33 times. If you are still not convinced, please read this article. Okay, next, you are having a party. You want to invite just enough people such that there is a 50% chance of two people having the same birthday. What is the minimum number of people that you should invite? 365, 183, 23? The correct answer is 23. So C is the correct answer. Does the number seem too low? That's why it is called the birthday paradox. Well, you will calculate that number in homework assignment number 3. Lies, damn lies and statistics is part of a phrase attributed to Benjamin Disraeli and popularized in the US by Mark Twain. According to him, there are three kinds of lies. Lies, damn lies and statistics. The statement refers to the persuasive power of numbers the use of statistics to bolster weak arguments and the tendency of people to disparage statistics that do not support their positions. You need to make statistics work for you, not lie for you. What is probability and what is statistics? Let me start with a simple definition. A statistic is a fact or a piece of information that is expressed as a number or percentage. The facts and figures that are collected and examined for information on a given subject are statistics. Probability is the likelihood of something happening or being true. So that is a, that's a simple definition. More formally, statistics is a set of methods used to collect and analyze data. Those statistical methods help people identify, study, and solve a variety of problems. Statistics help people make good decisions about uncertain situations. Probability is used to describe events that do not occur with certainty. People in varied occupations use statistics. Health professionals use statistical methods to determine whether a specific drug or a procedure is useful in the treatment of medical problems. 
weather forecasters use statistics to more accurately predict the weather engineers use statistics to benchmark standards for product safety and quality scientists employ statistical methods to design effective experiments economists apply statistical techniques in predicting future economic trends that was a quick introduction to the course of probability and statistics uh, to continue on please go to lesson number 2